All right, so I've been doing some more research and some more experimenting. I came across an interesting concept of the uh, charge pump or a um, blocking magnetic diode, as some are calling it. I believe uh, Tin Man coined that phrase. So this is a part replication, part experimentation of some work that I've been seeing um, and looking into. This is the schematic. Basically what I've got is a ferrite core and I've got three windings. Uh, A1, and, uh, sorry, uh, A and B with a trigger coil. Now A is wound this way and B is wound this way, so they are opposing each other. So as the magnetic field on A creates a north here and a south here, the uh, induced magnetic field of this coil will then oppose it, creating a north here and a south here, cancelling those two magnetic fields out, and cancelling the voltage, at least that's what I'm told happens, cancels out the voltage and creates nothing but amperage and then you have your trigger coil that runs the entire thing and this is basically the preliminary test to see what is happening to experiment with and just to try and figure out what's happening. Well there is a lot happening from what I can see and the camera doesn't show the blinking very well mainly because I've got it on and it's overexposing that at the moment what a silly camera I've got it on only 5 hertz at 10% duty cycle uh, I wonder if I could no, maybe I'll do it later but you can see that now I will adjust the frequency to make it more steady state so now I've got it on 60 hertz and um, there you go. Now that both the LEDs are, uh, all three of the LEDs are steady. Now they have some weird pulsing on there, which I can't visually see, but the camera seems to be picking up. So that's interesting. The other interesting thing is I'm running this off of a four volt lithium ion battery, which you can see there. And that's that on the schematic there. That's my uh, milliamp or amp reader. So it's going through the amp reader into um, a diode. From the diode, it's going into T1. Out of T1, it's going into the collector of the 2N3055. It is then um, triggering that coil. The negative of the battery is connected to the negative of the uh, PWM generator, as you can see here. Now this diode and this LED at the moment are not being used, but they are there for experimentation and I will show an interesting effect that they have. So basically that's it there. Now these are two, LED, uh, two LEDs on both coils. Uh, these two LEDs are the ones that are both lighting up, which shows that there's an AC current going back and forth. On this one, only one is lighting up. And there's uh, this one, although, uh, don't take my word for it, it could be the one or the other. But as you can see clearly, only one of them is lit up right now. Uh, the whole system is just running off of a 12 volt battery that's running my power supply which is then running the PWM meter so that's not really supplying much power the entire thing that's just providing the trigger it's basically that 4 volt battery that's um, running the whole system at the moment now I've got a resistor there so that I can play around with the resistance mainly because as you can see I'm drawing about 930 milliamps the only problem is my multimeter here is showing it's AC even though it's going through a diode so that's strange for 
to begin with and it keeps if I disconnect it as you can see it falls reconnect it so I can get it in one shot it goes through a weird or well, it did go through a weird oscillation we couldn't pick which one DC or AC DC AC I guess right now it's steadied on AC if I change the resistance it's now steady on AC okay fair enough uh, it shouldn't be AC it should be DC so that's one strange thing uh, obviously this LED is still relatively on the camera is barely showing it but it is on so the effect hasn't gone away I get that weird pulsing that I can see on the camera must be the frame rate uh, 4 volts here obviously um, that's reduced a bit because our milliamp draw has uh, gone down PWM is being driven by 5 volts but 21 milliamps now let's just change that back to here so that we can get this stronger now an interesting thing that happens with that LED there is you can see it's connected to this black lead that's not connected to anything positive is on the diode negative lead is on this negative lead now if I touch it it comes on Oop, right now it's not connected make sure the camera will pick it up as you can see there I'm touching the leads and you can see that LED coming on now I can put this onto the positive of the battery and it too will light up and it too has that strange pulsing I'm pretty sure that's the frame rate of the camera but this LED stays on these LEDs stay on that LED comes on but there's a lot of interesting things happening and Chris, I believe his name, the gentleman who keeps talking about this sort of bucking oscillation where you have an action, reaction, and a, a re-reaction or an, uh, an opposing action again where you have the fields cancelling each other out. And I've, many people have shown the scopes on these where the entire field doubles or triples in strength basically giving you over unity and from what I can see even though my coil isn't built very well it is about 160 mil wide ferrite core rod and it's literally had one layer wound this way um, one layer wound this way and then the trigger coil is on this one as the labels show and so the ferrite is doing a lot of the translation but you can see that even this this quick it only took me about half an hour to build that so my fingers are sore uh, there are some interesting effects that happen with that now if I change the polarity of these for instance you will see that the other LED will come on And now it's the top one that comes on instead. Everything else is still running. And our meter is still reading AC for some strange reason. Now let's see if I can turn the turn the entire system off. So we're not pulsing anymore. We've got nothing. Our meter starts beeping and complaining that there's no current. To turn the whole system back on. No, so I'm not getting that strange oscillation that I was getting between AC and DC this time, which is interesting. Seems to have steadied itself, but okay. Uh, here are my labels, just so you can confirm. Yeah, disconnected something. There we go. Is the LED brought on? 
All right, so now it would be a matter of tuning the whole thing so that um, we get a lot more efficiency. Now let me just play around with a higher frequency. Again, it sucks that the camera won't show it because it's bloody uh, 500 hertz. Oh, well that's interesting. 500 hertz, 11% duty cycle, our milliamps have gone down, but all our LEDs have gotten brighter. Okay, let's shoot up to 1K. Uh, 800. I wish you could see that. Oh, there we go. Okay, 2K now. What happens? Oh, milliamps have gone down. Jeez, these LEDs, as you can see, have really gotten brighter. Although this one has gotten dimmer. This one here has gotten dimmer. These ones are blinding. I think they're being driven way too high. But what? Less milliamps driven harder. Same with this one. Now that's only 12% duty cycle, which means it's only on for one eighth of the time, that transistor, at full volts. So if I know Chris and others have been talking about that you have to load this one in order to get this effect, but it seems that even though this is not loaded, wait a minute, hang on, let's see what happens if I just disconnect. Yeah, see, everything still stays the same. But <clears throat> it's a proof of concept. Okay, so we're at 23 milliamps. Well, let's go even, oops, wrong way, even higher. Let's go to, say, 10 kilohertz. Let's go wacky. Alright, oh that's right, these things have a weird bug where unless you change the duty cycle, the uh, hertz doesn't uh, always apply. So let's just do that, and yep, whoa, whoa, only 4.4 4 milliamps, and now it's switched to DC. That's interesting. Now it's reading DC. Our voltage has gone back up because obviously it's not being loaded as much. Now this LED is not as bright. It's dimmer. These ones are still bloody bright. And that LED is still on. Now this is fascinating. This is interesting. That coil arrangement, there is definitely something to that. Such a simple bucking concept where the theory is that you're cancelling the field out. I mean, it must still be getting voltage because the LEDs are, although the LEDs could be lighting because of that 4 volts. I need to play around with the voltage on that side and see what happens. But I don't see anywhere else where those LEDs could be getting powered. Because this can't be powering it. It's literally in a dead short loop here. It's only trigger triggering that 2 and 3055. And it's only triggering the on for this 4 volts. And these are all wound one to one. So I may have forgotten to mention that, but these are all wound one to one. So this, this one, this one, and this one all have 
relatively the same amount of windings and they're only single layered. So single layer going this way, single layer going that way, and then the trigger on top of, of A going this way as well. Now the trigger is going to be slightly bigger and slightly thicker because it's on top. So it's going to have probably a few more windings than the actual A and B, but it shouldn't be too much given that it's only the trigger. Okay, but we are getting AC out. That four milliamps, that's crazy. That is very crazy. How, I mean, this thing will only go up to, I believe 150. There we go, it's 30 kilohertz. And I changed the duty cycle because the bloody thing won't update. So the duty cycle has now gone, is now a 10%. 300, uh, 30 kilohertz and we are down to 2.3 milliamps powering these two LEDs bloody hell they're bright and that one's barely off as well so, and that LED is still on okay yep there's def in my mind there's definitely something to this um, there's no way that there's yeah now, good job, Chris. I think uh, I think I really need to start looking into this a bit more because that's fascinating. 2.3 milliamps. There's no way I can light these LEDs at 2.3 milliamps. Two of them. Still getting a signal there and there at 30 kilohertz and only 10% duty cycle. Now, what happens if I increase the duty cycle? This is going to be a long video. Okay, so I've increased it to 30%. Oh, that's now they're really bright. Um, that one's gotten bright. Jeez, these are... Yeah. I, you, you don't drive these this bright usually. And it's jumped up to 12.4 milliamps. Is our voltage. Okay, so how low of a duty cycle can we go? say let's go for five percent five percent duty cycle 0.6 of a milliamp oh now it's going to start complaining it can't even read that low these two are still on granted not as bright this one is pretty much off and so is that one but these are on at five percent duty cycle 8% duty cycle. There we go. 1.6 milliamps. And that's pretty bright. Okay. Okay. I think I'm going to stop it here. But this is fascinating. Um, uh, most of these ideas come from a website called overunity.com. Um or oh, I can't remember I'll put it in the description um, and I'll link to uh, I'll do an at at the videos and the person that I've been following that's um, that's been doing these he has another website called um, hyiq.org um, so go check that out this is where pretty much I got this idea from and you can drive this no matter what way you want. Now I'm just using a PWM. Some people have been using Jewel Thieves. Um, yeah, you can drive it whatever, earth ground signal, whatever you want to use. But this arrangement is the fascinating part. All right, I'll stop babbling now. But that's got me excited. I didn't think there would be too much, anything to this, but well, I did a little bit because I saw other people replicating and they were getting results. So I was like, okay, well, the only way to prove it to yourself is to do it yourself. And as you can see, I've proved it to myself. I don't need anybody else telling me oh, it's not possible. Or, or do this, do that. No, I've done it myself and I can see the results. That going back to, uh, 
DC is fascinating. I wonder if that dial just can't keep up with the frequency at that lower rate. Interesting. Anyways, all right. If you've watched this far, uh, thanks.